Hello everyone and welcome to a guide to being absolutely broken in Kingdoms of Amalur. So a few facts first, this is in 2023 on PC on Steam. And I want to mention this, that because there are some uh, recent patch updates and whatnot, there are some things that have changed if you haven't played the game in a while on PC. And this might also be the same for uh, Xbox or PlayStation. Uh, you can't uh, duplicate items any longer, so there's no way to like uh, power level or gold exploit in the game anymore, so that is gone. Um, so that's the first thing you should probably know that there are no way to kind of be uh, abusing ways to kind of level fast or whatever, at least not uh, in that sense. So I'll start with some good news first. You need to be at least level 30 and I would say that it's best at level 40, but depending on what you kind of aim for, a level 30 is enough. And there's also an even better thing. If you are already level 40 and you bought the recent DLC on Steam, uh, the expansion pack or whatever you would call it, I didn't buy that one, there's an even better method. Uh, this video will how I not explain that because that is a very easy method where you're basically just going to like a main town in the new expansion pack and, and accessing a vendor and salvaging that over and over again. That is very good for you if you bought the DLC and again you are level 50 or level 40. Uh, however, this method is only going to require you to be level 30 and you also just have to buy only the base game which includes the, yeah, the two DLC that was made back in the times when the game uh, was new. So I want to just demo a quick little thing here. I'm just going to walk up to a random mob. Now they are... The zones are scaling for leveling or whatever so it's not because I'm like over leveled. Just gonna find a little wolf here. <laughs> and you see how it's just flying away. Uh, I love that. I don't know why the game uh, does that where you like do so much damage that the uh, target just flies away. But it looks funny. Let's see if it happens again. Yeah, it kind of flew again. So let's do another one just for the fun of it. <laughs> the attack attacks me so fast compared to my slow uh, great sword. Boom! <laughs> Ah, uh, it looks so stupid. Let's just do my bow. And you can see it also does a lot of damage. However, the uh, bows in this game are pretty weak. Uh, but yeah, that's it for the demo. And let's move on to the gear. Just gonna quickly show that too. I will also just quickly explain my build. It's just a Might Finesse build. Uh, not really that deep into either one. Uh, but yeah, that's the build I go with. A uh, two-handed greatsword and a bow. And let's go into the weapon first. The primary. And this is the UEFA that I'm using. And now here comes the thing, since I'm not level 40 and I didn't kind of bother level to level 40, you can get even better uh, stats than mine. Uh, I will cover that in a bit, but uh, this only requires level 30 or maybe like 31 to start uh, to get this uh, weapon here. And honestly, if you want to like save time, you don't want to spend too much, already just like getting a weapon like this is enough to kind of feel very strong. Uh, yeah, that's the weapon. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly show the bow as well. And you can see that the items kind of has the same thing, the same base, 25, 55% uh, damage, the 20% damage during daytime. I find that to be the best added uh, crafting reagent. Um, some I prefer nighttime, but I prefer di uh, daytime. And the 25% critical healed damage. So that's the like the. Uh, yeah, the thing that you hold the blades with or whatever. And I'm also just gonna quickly show the uh, armor. So most of them are gonna have added bonuses, um, which doesn't really matter too much, but you can min-max that. I try to do that myself. Uh, so that's stuff like physical resistance. Uh, let's see, here I also added 16, 26% uh, damage resistance and 16 physical resistance. Again, that helps. Uh, just trying to again min max it a little bit, but it's mostly just stacking uh, plus damage. Can also sh quickly perhaps show something else. So what did I do? Here? Oh yeah, here I also just added seven percent damage resistance. Again, another little thing, but also notice again very high damage on it. And yeah, it's very fun to see. Uh, here I added let's see seven damage resistance, and I added sixteen bleed uh, bleeding resistance. And I don't think I added anything besides physical resistance on the boots. And then my shield is also just kind of, yeah, physical resistance. 
So that's it, pretty much how the items looks like, and now I'll just kind of move on to how we can get started on this whole thing. So let's start with something easy first. You have to be level 30 for this to work, and this is in Raytheon, the, the big city where you kind of just let on. If you only do like the main quest, you will eventually get to here pretty fast. And then you have to go to this little part here, uh, Seafawn Tavern, and again, be at level 30. And once you're inside here, you just go to this little guy up here. Uh, let's try and find him. He's kind of blends in with the others, but yeah, uh, it's called uh, yeah Gambler. Gambler. Yeah, it's a fun little pun. Uh, also bring some gold. I would say half a million gold or something. It's not too bad, but just bring like half a million, and then quick save. So what quick saving is in this game is basically just uh, depending on the keybinds and whatnot, you can manually save. Uh, that's fine. You just manually save if you want to start out by that. But if uh, I think default keybind on PC, it's like F5 and then F9 for a reload. And I can just quickly show you what now happens if I do a reload. And now I'm back to the gambler where I just was so F5, F9, this is what we're gonna be doing. Okay, and once you've done your quick load, just talk to him, go into his shop. And since I already kinda bought uh, the thing what we're gonna be doing or talking about, uh, just know that it's unique jewelry supply, uh, surprise. And you're basically just going to buy this over and over again. And uh, just before I showed my weapon and armor, I'll let you just now show the accessories. So these are the types of amulets that he has, and I spent like two hours, three hours, maybe five, I don't know. It was a lot of hours to get the absolutely best rolls that you can get from the vendor. And yeah, these are some absolutely insane amulets, like these are stupidly good. So you see here, they can roll two to all skills, 30 damage, 8 critical hit chance. And they can be maybe even better if you're like level 40. I don't think being level 50 matters, but maybe if you're level 40, you can roll even better. Uh, really, really crazy amulets that you can get. And I'm also just going to show the e rings, so like 35% physical damage on this one. Very, very good. And this comes from the epic. Oh, uh, the, the ones here, uh, the, the blue colored ones. They don't come from the epic one, they just come from the uh, yeah the, the non-epic one. And yeah, you can see the rings are just insane, like they are so good. Uh, yeah, very very good rings that you can get from this one. And it's just gonna take a lot of time to keep re-rolling the vendor uh, without hard saving. And these are the rings that I currently use. Yeah, I wasn't able to get like the complete two same rings, but uh, still very happy with these two ones. Having a little bit of mana regen is very nice on a warrior. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's the first easy. This is the easy part. At least you can get uh, these amulets here already at level 30. Just bring some time and half a million gold or something like that. So that's pretty doable for most people to get. Uh, yeah, the best uh, accessories in the game. And once you've sorted out your accessories, you want to go to Dead Kel, so that's the DLC. And I suppose you need to sort of complete the entire DLC to unlock where we are going to now. But I think you can kind of Google if you do need to complete the entire DLC. I just completed it. It didn't really take that long. And it's a pretty good DLC. Like if I just quick wanted to rate it, uh, the DLC here, Teeth of Nerys, is better uh, but this one doesn't take that long time either so we are gonna go to grave hall keep now this is where the yeah, the hard part starts so just to give you an example this is what a fully unlocked keep uh, in the dlc looks like so you have to get pretty far and kind of just yeah unlock a lot of stuff out here and this is what it's gonna look like outside and now we come to hell literally hell you can spend hundreds of hours in here and you, if you're not uh, lucky. Uh, I re-rolled a hundred times and by the time I done it a hundred times uh, I think I also spent a million gold uh, because I wanted to keep the um, reagents, the resources without uh, quick saving. I gave up. So I would say try for a hundred times a million gold or so and if you don't get what you need then just kind of settle with whatever you have. Um, it's a pretty torturous and not that easy part that uh, the video is going to go into now. So we want to go into the component case and this is where all your components are going to end up. So um, this is basically, 
you're gonna have a lot of these items when you're doing the method and all of these items are just gonna be easily uh, like acquired but sadly they're not really gonna be that useful like they look pretty good like for flawless amplified grip like that looks pretty good but yeah you really only want the best stuff so something like this 25 percent critical hit damage sharpening flawless sharpening handle or fla flawless sharpening shaft those are like the things that you want to aim for but the main part of this is just to get master damaging bindings, master damaging grips, and master damaging rivets. Or if you're level 40, you can also hope to get flawless damaging rivets and so forth. Since I'm only uh, level 31 right now, I believe, I am not able to get uh, the flawless, uh, so I'm never really gonna be able to craft the very best. But as you see, it's already good enough, you're gonna be absolutely broken, you're able to one-shot most things with no matter the build that you really play like. You can play the worst build in this game and with these items you're probably still gonna be able to one-shot most things in the game. So yeah, the method can be done already at level 30, 31, but it's best to be level 40. And what we want to get out of this is not the master damaging bindings or the master damaging rivets. These two can be gotten as many times as you want through crafting, which I will talk about in a bit. What we need, what we want, is a master damaging grip or flawless damaging grip. Anyways, back to Gravehall Keep. So, there is a little guy here that shows up, uh, Maitha Runwen. Um, so when you unlock the keep and everything, you talk to her. Greetings, master of Gravehall. Just go through the... yeah, the... The options here on the diplomatic mission and then click on Ember Deep. And now the only thing that we care about is just trade. And then you're always gonna select 10,000. And as I told before, I did this a hundred times, so that's a million gold, at least if my uh, math checks out. <laughs> uh, but you can also get like good materials at just 5,000, but uh, there's no really point of not just going 10,000. You also get more uh, materials like this. And the thing with uh, gold and everything, it's pretty easy to get gold in this game, so I would not quick save and to save gold and time, because you saw that I just talked about the flawless sharpening hilt before and so on. So while you're doing this, you are able to get some materials that will matter. Uh, it's not a complete waste of time to not quick save on this method. But you can quick save to save time plus gold. So now we're gonna do this uh, 10,000 gold dialogue. And then we just have to run up here to the stairs to reset the timer. Takes uh, about one and a half minute to do this entire thing I'm gonna go through now. And then I just always just put it to 24 hours. And then run down to her again, and the mission will be completed. And yeah, you're gonna be running down these stairs a lot. Like, as I told you, after a hundred times, a hundred, I still didn't have a flawless uh, damaging grip or... Really, yeah, it, it's, it's a very low chance, so I just gave up with uh, a single damaging uh, grip that I did have uh, from beforehand. And now you see all these things that I got, there's so many materials and you can even get the Mephirian, uh which is a new higher end uh, crafting material that the, uh, the reforged uh, version gave us. And then you just keep doing this over and over again to get your first flawless or master damaging grip. So it's very fatiguing just doing that mission over and over again. Um, if you can try to consider just get damaging, flawless damaging grip from somewhere else, like the Teeth of Nerus DLC, where you maybe just found like the trolls in this area here. So you kind of just go up and down and reset this area with quick save or whatever. And there are some areas where you can farm these flawless damaging parts and whatnot. Uh, so consider that if you really don't get any luck with the uh, mission. So I first just want to talk quickly about Sagecraft. Obviously you need to be maxed in both the skills, both the blacksmithing and the jewel crafting here, or whatever you want to call it. I uh, just want to quickly talk about the, uh, yeah, the knight and sun gems. So to craft the gems that I suggest, obviously you should go with whatever you like, but 
if you're here to be broken, you might as well just go for the best, and that is utility gems. And then you have to get quite a few of these uh, pristine physical uh, things. Some of the other combinations also work, but I just went with pristine physical shard and then pristine uh, magic shard. And this will create a 20% damage during daytime. And honestly, if you're lazy, like the lazy uh, dude or whatever, you can just get some crafted uh, items with a lot of sockets in them or whatever. And then just, yeah, I mean, the game is already easy enough. If you just kind of just want something good enough, get the dual crafting done uh, at the vendor in uh, in the Rafia city there or whatever it's called. And then this, I mean, the gems are so strong on its own. Uh, but yeah, that is how to get the best gems at the very least. Another thing I should also mention, uh, I believe this was how I did it back then at least. If you want physical resistance um, crafting material so you can salvage that, you have to again do pristine physical shard and f uh, pristine protection shard. And then quick save and salvage this uh, item that you put the gem into over and over again until you get a physical resistance uh, craftable um, material. That is how you min-max even better stats on the already crazy gear that I talked about uh, when I showed my own gear, where I tried to min-max damage resistance and physical resistance. And yeah, this is how to get even those materials, where you're basically just gonna put uh, a gem into uh, whatever random item that you are gonna craft, and then you salvage that over and over until you get lucky. So if you made it this far in the video, you are probably very familiar now with quick saving. And this is what we are going to be doing as well for the last part. So now you already got your crazy amulets and your rings. You got your uh, best gems. You even got a lot of crafting materials. You basically have everything but three things. You don't have damaging grips, damaging bindings and damaging rivets. And that is what we are going to try and fix now. In the description below I will have a very old video from like 2010 and credits to that person. I'm not li literally delivering anything new, um, that video is already very relevant today. I'm just gonna try and do a bit of a voiceover and try to explain it. So we're gonna start with the damaging grip. You already, uh, you, you know, you have this item. So we're gonna go into rogue armor and then we start with a buckler. And then you probably can use about any of these ones. I even think you can use like an oak god. Um, so oh god is like the lesser, uh, the worser base, uh, and then the ebony god is probably like the best uh, one ever. But I think even like an ash god is gonna give you what you want. So we take the ebony god, and then we take the master damaging grip, you know, the single master damaging grip, the only one you had to get, you only have to have one of these to make it work. And then we just skip uh, this entire stage here, so we're gonna hit skip. But anyways, just skip the gem. And now you have this result here. You can see that I'm about to... Yeah, I'm not gonna craft this one because I don't really need to. But once you have this single buckler here, this is where it all starts. So you can salvage this buckler and hope to get two damaging grips. Or what you really need is a damaging grip and a damaging binding. This is going to take a long time and I think you're probably gonna experience that it won't happen with maybe like a 5% five, five to 10% chance. So you can easily reload, salvage, reload, salvage this like 20 times before you even uh, get a single damaging binding or grip. And I'm gonna guess that, uh, let's just do some quick math here. So you probably need at least 10 damaging uh, grips, damaging bindings uh, and so forth. So you need quite a few of these uh, to make it all work. And this means that you're probably going to reload like, I don't know, 300 times or something like that. Like it's very boring, but this is the only way to really get uh, these in a more efficient way than they're grinding in the game and hoping that you might loot them from the chest. But yeah, again, you craft this buckler here and you just salvage, 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 reload, 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 a quick load even, and that's it. And once you have 10 damaging uh, bindings, uh, we can move on to the next step. And so once you have like 10 damaging bindings, you're going to be crafting a bow instead. So let's just find the weapon. So in here, weapons, and you can just take uh, scroll down to longbow. 
And then again, I don't think it really matters what type of bow that you use, but just try to use the best base that you have. That might give a higher chance. So I'm just gonna take the Ebony. Uh, when I did it, I at least just took this for the weapon. Um, so yeah, just take something like, uh, this one is pretty bad, so I'm just gonna take this one. And then you skip the rivet, skip it, and then you're going to take the hilt, or the master damaging bindings, or flawless if you're lucky. <laughs> and then you skip the gem, and then proceed to salvage this over and over again until you have 10 damaging rivets. And now you're at the point where you have 10 rivets, and you got, uh, no, not 10 rivets. Oh yeah, you do have 10 bindings and 10 rivets. So now you just need some grips. And so the last step, bindings to grip. So we're gonna do check rums. Um, and the specific items I make here, honestly, I think other weapons could also work and whatnot, but I'm just gonna follow uh, what worked for me and so on. So check rums. And then I take a Prismia base. I don't really think it matters uh, what type of base it is again, but just take whatever you wanna use. And then I also just take like a flawless uh, uh, handle uh, for good measurement. And then I take, uh, scroll down to find your master damaging bindings. And then you skip the part with the grip, because we want to get the grip, but we have the binding. Skip the gem. And again, you're just gonna salvage this chakra over and over again till you get double lock or whatever you can say. So you need to both get a damaging binding and a damaging grip. And that's pretty much how it all works. So yeah, this takes a crap load of time. Like you're just gonna craft a few items and just quick reload over and over and over again. It's not a fun process, it really isn't. And I do say that you can easily spend 20 hours as I mentioned before. But once you have everything complete, let's try to make an item. So once you have all the, yeah, whatever stuff you need, uh, let's try and make maybe a long sword. So let's see if I have something good. So I don't have some of the best items for it right now. That would be the Mepherian one, but I do have a Prismere blade, so that's pretty okay. And then since I want to get critical hit damage, I'm gonna be using this one. Uh, again, you get these from the mission at the Grey Hall Keep. So pretty good to just get a few of those if you haven't lying around from the mission. And then you want to get the rivets, so just go down and find Master Damaging Rivets and Master Damaging Grip and then Gemma Radiance and that's how the sword is going to look like pretty decent uh, again if you are level 40 and you get flawless you're gonna get even more damage than I'm showing here so definitely try to be level 40 before you do this method but uh, yeah, some exciting stuff and I guess I'll also just quickly show uh, maybe like a warrior arm or something. Let's just maybe make like a... yeah, let's try this one. Oh yeah, also do have a Mithirian Prismere chest piece here, so those are the best core components uh, that we got in the uh, Reforged. And let's see, I don't really think I have anything better than the Master e Everlasting Lining again. This are uh, more of a min-max thing, you don't have to worry about that much, but if you want to get the absolutely best crafted items, you do have to get like these specific ones here. So I'm just gonna quickly go with that, and then go with some master damaging irrevents, or improved damaging rivets, whatever you have. Uh, let's just quickly find the one there, master damaging rivets I use. Uh, I don't even know what would be good for this, but I probably have something... Um, yeah, I think this is one of the best ones I have. You can probably get a little bit better than 7%. And then take your gem or radiance. Um, I can also just quickly show some other gems that you could consider. Uh, something like the gem of vanquish you can buy from a vendor. Gem of conquer I also believe is from a vendor. Uh, these ones are very cool for armor and whatever. But yeah, in general I think the gem of radiance is just a better pick for everything. And that's how the chest is going to look like. Very cool. <laughs> a lot of damage resistance if you do try to min-max uh, either physical resistance or damage resisting components, but it's not really that uh, important. You will still be very strong regardless. But yeah, it's very, very complicated. Honestly, I think it's one of the harder item processes for crafting in a game, um, in an RPG game anyways. Um, it also takes a long time. 
But at least now you can maybe consider going for the jewelry at first. Try to kind of see if you can maybe get within an hour or two, uh, get everything you want from that vendor. And then maybe move on to the Cal DLC, complete that, unlock the Gravehold Keep and just kind of go from there and see how much time you want to spend on the whole process. Because it is quite boring, uh, I will admit. Uh, it's not fun and it takes a long time. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I will try to answer.